Hello and welcome to another look at what's new in Azure DevOps services. I am Sasha Rosenbaum, a Senior Program Manager on the Azure DevOps team. And today, here with me today is Martin. Martin, hey. do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Martin Woodward. I'm a, a Program Manager on the Azure, Azure DevOps team too. All right, and we're in the San Francisco office today, which you can see by our beautiful fake background <laughs> picture. So um, we are talking in this video um, about the new features that are rolling out in Sprint 160, which just finished rolling out to all organizations. So let's just get started. The first feature that we want to show you today is something called Review App and Environments in YAML Pipelines. So. Um, we're all familiar with pull requests, and pull requests are very useful when you commit your code changes. You can actually verify that the changes look good um, before you actually merge them, merge them into master, and you can even run your tests on pull requests. But in the new world of microservices, sometimes we have the use case where we actually want to test the service before breaking everyone's dependency on it. So even if we're pushing into dev environments, we still want to make sure that our service looks good before sort of forcing our changes on everybody else. So we are solving this problem with the new feature called Review App. So to demo this, I'm going to start with a pipeline and I'm going to go into my GitHub repository from here. And here I'm going to create a new branch. You can see that I already have a couple. So I'm going to create a new one. And then I'm going to make a very meaningful change here. So this is going to be my meaningful change and my meaningful commi commit message. So I've just updated the readme. And now I'm going to go into pull request and create a new pull request on this new branch. I, and just verify that I'm merging into the correct um, repository. So now I've created my pull request and that should kick off my pipeline. So this is building right now. I'm going to go into one that's already uh, been completed and I'm going to show you the deployment stage. So the deploy, you will see that there's two types of deploy in here. So one would actually deploy on um, our new changes to what's called pro production environment, right? But the other is deploy and pull requests. And you can see that the steps in here are using review app and then creating a new namespace to which your changes are actually deployed. And so your service is deployed in a standalone fashion and you can test your changes before actually going into um, production with everybody else. Wait, so every single pull request creates a brand new environment, and then inside that environment, you've got a, a copy you can just go play with and make sure it still works. Yeah, so the environment, the concept of environments is actually overarching for everything. But yeah. yes, you are creating a new namespace for, for your that service. environment. That's awesome. Yes, yes, and you can actually make sure that your stuff works. And so since we're here, um, I can also show you another thing. Uh -huh. So you might have seen it came out a little bit earlier that we have added approvals and checks. Um, and so now we're extending approvals a little bit. So I'm going to add a couple of approvers to my pipeline. Um, and I can actually add teams um, and a, um, AD groups in here. Mm -hmm. And so now we've added an ability to actually select how many approvals you actually want. And um, do you want to allow approval approvers to approve their own stuff? OK, handy for demos, yeah. Probably, <laughs> yes, only for demos. Um, and then you can select some control options, such as timeout after uh -huh. 30 days and stuff like that. Um, so you can control your deploys with approvals, which is very common in enterprise environments. Yeah, for pushing to production maybe anyway. Uh, absolutely. Uh -huh. so, so yeah, last week we were at Ignite um, and it was a, a good week. So thanks to anybody who came along. That was thanks for dropping by the booth. Um, don't worry if you weren't there. The, there's a load of sessions available. You can go catch up. Um, Damien Brady and I did a session around um, pipelines as part of that. So we'll put a link into the description for this. But what I wanted to do is highlight a bunch of features that we demoed as part of that Ignite session. Nice. And Rupesh has done a blog post for us on these. So if we just have a quick look, the first one is around, we've added a few different types of triggers. 
So we've added the ability to trigger on um, a pipeline. So you can say, um, you know, when a pipeline finishes, then trigger, you know, use that to trigger my build kind of thing or trigger new build. And that allows you to chain uh, different YAML based uh, build and deployment processes together. So you could have, you know, deployments triggered by a build, which is quite a common request if you want to right. separate concerns. Or, may, or maybe you can have builds that are triggered by other builds. So somebody changes something which is a framework. And then you can then automatically make that, you know, if my framework changes, then use it as a trigger to rebuild my project. So right. some of those things were kind of already in the classic UI editor. So this is where YAML is kind of catching up a bit there. Uh, but that's really cool. One of the other things that's been added is the ability to um, trigger based on a container arriving in the Azure Container Registry. So when the container arrives, you can say when, once it's tagged production, for example, um, then you can deploy that image or you can do something on that image, you know, add an initial pipeline, commonly deploy it somewhere. So I can trigger my pipeline based on a container registry instead of just, you know, looking at the master branch being checked in. Yeah, exactly. And that's great for when you've got lots of teams contributing, you know, they'll contribute different things into the container and then you might want to redeploy it. That and sort of stuff. separate, like maybe yeah. it's different teams working yeah. on different stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the, the team are working on more triggers. One of the things they're working on actually is a webhook trigger trigger which is really cool you know a number of times you built like an azure function yeah. which will like listen for something go do something and then use the rest api they're actually building that trigger in as well so they've got some really cool plans that they're doing around the trigger space very nice i know how this is going to be highly useful as yeah well. very much and then the other thing that we're actually working on now and you know when you're doing deployments you currently have like a strategy and you know you just do you know run once kind of thing. you just go do the strategy they're actually adding in the additional strategy types now so the first one they've tackled is a, a canary strategy so a progressive exposure strategy so in this example here, Rupesh has got it doing, you know, 25% and then 50% of the estate and then also the timeout minutes as well, you know, how long it delays between deploying and all that sort of stuff. Before. Right, so it will progressively expose more and more traffic to, like, the new changes. Exactly, that yeah. yeah. And then that way, um, cool. now that's good as long as you've got some, as long as you've got telemetry in this listing to your application right, so you right, know when it right. goes wrong. But yeah, so this is some cool new stuff that's been added. And as I say, if you look in the description, we'll have a link to the, the hour-long demo session that Damien and I did. It's very cool. So thank you for coming. And um, this is all we have time for today, but there's loads of other features in the sprint notes. So please check out the notes. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channels for more videos. And we'll see you all next sprint.